Welcome back. So then we're off break. Uh, and next out is uh, Birger Sevalsson from uh, the um, Oslo School of Architecture and uh, Design. So I'll give the word to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm tr thrilled to be invited to this, especially because I'm not a healthcare person at all. I am an uh, uh, educator and researcher uh, with uh, methodology as my main thing. So that I'm going to talk about um, how um, we try to do the work better with the complex issues. And you might agree with me that the health sector is full of complex uh, problems that are quite hard to address and that are, they are interconnected, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm going to talk about systems-oriented design as a, as a methodology for working as designers and non-designers with complex issues. So why is it not? There you go. So why SALT? So when I started with this um, <coughs> kind of uh, journey into complexity in around 2005 or something, you could say, um, what spurred me was uh, my dissatisfaction with uh, the field of design. I thought uh, designers were not very good at handling complexity. I thought there was little responsibility for the unexpected effects from interventions. Um, while fixing one thing, we created new problems elsewhere in the system. Designers were very object-oriented and too little interested in relations. Co-design processes were often shallow and not involving the right people. Affected bystanders were ignored and I think very often still are ignored. Um, user orientation overshadowed other perspectives. There was little attention to the system that works with the system, the system you are in. And quick fixes rather than networks of solutions and stories of actions over time were often the case. I don't know why this is a little bit um, slow when trying to shift the page. So <coughs> systems-oriented design <coughs> is like a dialect in a growing field um, um, of, a, I would say, sort of a renaissance of systems thinking in design. There has been many systems thinkers before, but it never become really mainstream or very powerful. I think that's what about, uh, is about to happen. So it's a dialect in a, in a, in a pluralistic, open-minded um, community or network or field which we call systemic design. And uh, the Systemic Design Association is promoting this um, and energizing this field. Um, we have a very nice uh, uh, web page um, from our symposiums, the rstsymposium.org, where you can find a lot of material and inspiration and articles, keynotes, etc., addressing the field. Um, <clears throat> so systems oriented design as a dialect is, um, if you think about this new field as um, tension between design practice, design thinking, systems practice and systems thinking, um, I um, think that systems oriented design is a bit closer to design practice. So we are doing systems thinking through designing and, um, and um, trying to keep the designerly core of our way of working. Um, so what is this systems thinking? Very shortly, I'm not going, this, this, this would be like a, a whole five-year education in itself, but uh, just to bring everybody on board of what I think it is, um, my best um, um, example is um, the field of ecology. Um, it is interdisciplinary, it's bringing together many different sciences and you cannot isolate it in a laboratory, but you can actually simulate it on a computer. So it's, uh, um, to me, the definition of the field of systems thinking is that it's sort of the science of interconnectedness, how things are connected and related. So what is systems-oriented design? In systems-oriented design, we look at businesses and organizations as ecologies, and sustainability or ecology is not only a matter of being green, but also a matter of 
technology, economy, management, culture, politics, technology, and the markets, etc. Um, just a little thought experiment, um, understanding the complexity of our world and demands maybe look a little bit beyond the object. So um, this is, has become sort of a classic, this little silly paper cup, the most stupid little naive object I can find and try and prove that it's not that simple. If you look beyond it and it's look at it as an um, intersection point between many different systems, um, the coffee system, the water system, the paper system, etc. And uh, even the political dimension of this paper cup, um, uh, if you think about fair trade, etc. So it's how complex the world is that we work with, how we conceive it is actually uh, very much a, 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 a issue of perception of how we analyze and how we look at it. So um, there's a few kind of hooks we have in systems oriented design. We have some more than those two, but the, that's the two I bring to the table. The first one we talked about, look beyond the object. It helps you to unfold the complexity of seemingly simple things. This will increase your curiosity and interest in the world, reframe your preconceptions and open up for innovation. It will help you to calculate the consequences of your actions. Now, when you are in a field like health, the healthcare field, you are already at the starting point overwhelmed by um, a very high degree of complexity. But I think um, um, shying away from it it's the worst thing you can do in that situation because you let yourself involve instead of embracing it and trying to um, understand it better. You will never understand it fully, but you will be more actively involved and engaged with it. So the other one is to stop work with uh, trying to solve single problems, work rather with problematiques, which is a um, term that maybe is similar to Dublé and felt in Norwegian or field of problems, networks of problems. Um, understanding that problems are interconnected and networked. Maybe they're not even our problems. Maybe they are, it's better to call them situations. While solving one problem, you might create another much worse problem as already mentioned. Work with problematics or problem fields, networks of integrated problems. Um, <clears throat> at the core of all this way of Designing is visual thinking, visual dialogue, practice, and thinking gives an enormous advantage for assessing, internalizing, and communicating complex information. I think we are almost totally dependent on this kind of visual thinking, which uh, I will explain more. Um, here, one example. This is um, from the health sector. It's, uh, you could say, the universe of a stroke, what happens, who is involved, um, who, what are the side effects, etc. So such an illustration does uh, immediately one thing for the observer that you would uh, re-understand the stroke as something much more complex that you might thought from the beginning. It might have this effect. I don't know about you guys, but uh, for me, it does exactly that. So um, giga mapping, that's what we call it when we do this very big um, graphic um, explorations of complex systems. Um, the most central tool or technique in SADIS giga mapping, giga maps are extensive, multi-scalar, mixed, inclusive, genre breaking, unorthodox, creative, messy, myriadic visualizations of fields, problems, issues, subjects, environments, things and social constructs in the world. So the main um, idea is to sweep, sorry, what is this? Please um, mute your mics, <laughs> confusing. Um, okay, so uh, sweeping in, um, it might have been a cough, Peter can maybe correct me, who said us to sweep in them uh, um, enough information into the process is kind of uh, a very central part of this. 
So <laughs> a student of, of us did this uh, wonderful um, diagram or graphic, uh, the, the, the difference between tunneling and tunneling, tunneling uh, uh, information and reducing it down to a simplification, which in the end actually becomes useless because it doesn't really uh, um, cater for the, all the issues you have to bring with you. So gigamapping is more like the tunneling process where you, you bring the, uh, information along, but you try to order it and re-understand it and interpret it. Here's is another one is from um, a, a group of students working with a researcher um, on neuroplasticity and ADHD. So gigamapping should mix and interrelate all kinds of information and different modes of presentation of data, info, and in knowledge. Uh, the mixing and relating of different channels and ways of representing info is crucial. So we can put all kinds of information into the map and relate it. Gigamaps are bridging devices and dialogue tools, bridging between expertises, stakeholders, silos, and professions. So in this Little example, this is um, a student who did uh, their master thesis on um, the health at sea situation. Like every ship has an, uh, an officer who is responsible for, for the health. And what you see here is an early <coughs> prototype she made, which is typical, a typical design response, designer response to make an object that is improving some kind of communication issue when using medical stuff um, uh, at sea. But this was just the first step by breaking the, um, let's say the categories and working across, um, across uh, uh, realms. She understand uh, that to combine the need for education and the need for operation, which she then put together in one device. So it's both, uh, a device that helps her helps the medical officer to operate at sea, but also to have a constant learning curve while at sea. So um, co-inquiry um, central to this is of course engaging with the systems, aka people and others. Um, and uh, this is from a project with my students who were working with the um, uh, Directorate for Elderly Homes in Oslo, which was uh, doing a very um, big reorganization. And they had uh, experienced a communication breakdown. They were, they were having meetings where it was very hard to stay on the same page and to really understand each other and to even to um, recognize when they were talking um, past each other when they didn't understand each other. So they were asking the students to make a communication tool based on visual communication, and that really changed the dialogue. So um, I'm, I love this Escher um, Lito or, or Etching. Um, you see those people in the same, they are in the same room, they're sharing the same space, but they are in total different um, universes. So this is where the really issues the challenges of working compl with complexity across silos, across disciplines, across mm -hmm. groups of people starts. We don't understand each other. Um, and we don't know that we don't understand each other. Um, General Rumsfeld is um, quoted as having said, it's made this, this uh, notion of unknown unknowns. The unknowns that we don't know that we don't know. And this is very um, important because um, these are really the things that are very, very hard to unearth. Um, the gigamapping process as a dialogic process has shown to be very efficient on unearthing those areas which we are totally blind for. And this is actually how we can look in the heat of it. Um, we are training systemic design as a skill more than a theory. It's even not a really clear methodology or, or it doesn't provide clear methods to follow, but it's more like a skill and competence training. The ed education program of 
So I'll just focus on skill and confidence building rather than following particular rule driven processes. And we train skills and sensibilities like visual thinking, understanding wicked problems, training a sensibility for systems, understanding tacit knowledge and how to make that explicit and how to internalize knowledge back to tacit and sense making and sense sharing. Um, this project was uh, quite, um, just checking time. Um, yeah, I think I'm still good for a few minutes. Um, this project was um, done with the um, Sexual Assault Center at Oslo Legevakten. So many of you may, might know it um, by, by um, um, Manuel Aguirre and Christian Sömsnes. Um, they were looking at the, at the system of how um, vic victims of sexual assault were um, received and how they were treated into a complex system even like a labyrinthic um, interior and involving several different um, bodies, public, public bodies, so to say, like the medical field and the, uh, um, the police and the lawyers, etc., which made this um, crisis management a really traumatic uh, experience. So engaging with the experts, doctors, um, victims, etc. They redesigned the whole thing. Another example of what uh, this kind of deep dive into systems can look like. This is um, a really rich giga map of um, a situation of um, families that are um, not so very resourceful and they, they are dependent on public uh, uh, services and how this world can appear to them and how complex this actually is with those different public um, offices and services, um, maybe not even interacting, etc. So um, this is all about human activity in the end here. Um, some examples from, uh, from Hollow Game from some years back, again about some elderly homes and how people are engaged in this kind of um, iterative collaboration with the designers and how they are um, destroying the designers' giga maps. I simply love that. Um, <clears throat> all the projects I have here, you might have seen that there are some um, links there. So they are linking to the project. They, most of them have quite extensive reports you can study. I also want to point you to this um, doctoral thesis by Manuela Aguirre, um, diving into the, the <laughs> challenges and difficulties of transforming public organizations. So to find, finalize, we started a executive master program uh, last year um, with 20 highly um, competent students from many different areas, also from the health sector. And we're starting a new round um, in January. So with this, I think I maybe we can have a few um, questions, but uh, I think it's the real health expert, Peter's uh, turn. <laughs>